Hey everybody, this is Derek, and this is a quick look at Sepal. Sepal is an open source tool for, as the website is telling you here, uh, Earth observations, data access, processing, and analysis for land monitoring. Which is a fancy way to say, Sepal is a service that gives you access to other services which have uh, high resolution uh, satellite imagery. So uh, they see themselves as the integrator between a whole bunch of uh, satellite services combined with some pretty nifty um, tools for processing that information. Okay, so uh, it prides itself on ease of use. So there are code-free ways to access and process satellite data, uh, but it also gives tools for high-end users where they can actually edit you know, Jupyter notebooks and, and things like that, mess around with Python code. Um, it gives you high computing power if you uh, want to. Uh, by default, when I got a Sepal account, my uh, instance allowed me one processor with uh, two gigabytes of RAM, but that can go up to 128 processors and uh, two terabytes of RAM, which, you know, when you think about it, you're dealing with high resolution uh, satellite imagery. You want as much power as you can possibly get. So uh, Sepal... Uh, enables that sort of thing to happen. You can use or get access to Google Earth engines, Jupyter Notebooks, Shiny servers, RStudio servers, and, and use these tools directly inside Sepal. Um, Sepal bills itself as a service with a bunch of integrations. So you can hook right up into online services like Open Forest Collect Earth, um, which is kind of cool. And finally, uh, Sepal comes to the table with a bunch of uh, partnerships. So there's the European Space Agency, there's NASA, uh, ETH Zurich, Google. Uh, there are a bunch of different partners with uh, either imagery or data processing skills, and it tries to put these things to bear. And it's an open source project, which is really cool. Um, okay, so what does all this mean uh, when you are actually using the tool? I'm going to switch over to a new window, and I'm going to go through a process of uh, getting Landsat data, or Sentinel-2 data in this case, from uh, Sepal directly. I'm going to start a new analysis, getting the plus sign here, and it gives me a bunch of different recipes for things I can do. I can create an optical mosaic, I can create a radar mosaic, I can do some classification or a time series, which is kind of cool, using Landsat. Um, in our case, I'm just going to do an optical mosaic. Now, the first thing it asks is how do you want to select uh, your area of interest, the, the place that you are going to be focusing your attention on. And you can select by country or province, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can say, oh, I'm interested in Indonesia and select a province from within Indonesia. You can do an EE table or uh, you can draw a polygon. And drawing a polygon activates... Uh, this view that shows a whole bunch of labels, uh, which is kind of useful because now we need to zoom in and figure out exactly what it is that we want to see. Now I'm going to zoom in to uh, the West Kalimantan area of Indonesia. And I'm interested in an area called Sintang, which is an area where one of our partners is operating out of. Here we go. Here's Sintang. You can see a um, long winding river. And note here that, um, you know, we're not actually processing a bunch of data right now. We're basically looking at um, street uh, roads and rivers, uh, but there's no like pixels being downloaded. It's all vector based. Now what we want to do is to isolate a particular polygon of space. And I'm going to pick a polygon around here. Just going to click and draw on the map. I'm not actually too certain what's what's in here, so we're going to see what we get. And automatically it zooms in to the uh, area that I have designated. Okay, now I hit next. It asks what dates I'm interested in um, and the year which pixels in the mosaic should come from. And I'm going to say 2021. You can actually go way, way back uh, to 1977 apparently um, with some maps, or 1982, depending on the satellite information that you're getting. Uh, in our case, we're just going to go for 2021. We want to get stuff from this year. And it gives you a choice of Landsat. 
or Sentinel imagery. Landsat is a uh, long-running satellite uh, that is used by a number of different services. Um, it's got a number of different bands to analyze, uh, but it doesn't have the highest resolution. I think its max resolution is close to 30, whereas Sentinel-2 gets you down to 10 meters resolution, and um, apparently... Um, CPOL is also getting access to planet data, which, if they're getting high-resolution planet data, gets all the way down to 5 uh, meters of resolution. But for the moment, we're just going to look at Sentinel-2 data. And you can see that it starts loading the preview. Now, here's where you see that we're using some, uh, you know, a, a lightweight machine to process the data. Um, and it gives you a report on how much storage we've used and how, uh, how uh, let's see, the instance budget that we're using. I have a quota of a dollar, and so far I've used eight cents of that. Okay, now we're looking at 2021 Sentinel-2 data. Interestingly enough, if I want to, uh, I can't get this in my area of interest, but I can ask for a planet composite um, which some people would want quite a bit of, actually. So if I select that instead of um, the, the sepal base map, you can see the planet data coming in. Um, and in fact, if I want to, I can just turn off the optical overlay and we see nothing but planet data. Uh, apparently, this resolution goes down to 10 meters. So we're not, probably not getting the full planet data. I'm not really sure what's happening here to be honest, because um, clearly it's able to access this data, but it's not treating it as um, an optical layer to edit. It's just saying that it's, um, it's uh, a base layer. At any rate, I have identified this particular area, and you can see that it's doing some work um, messing around with the cloud imagery. Oops, I think this is the menu that I'm looking for. Yeah, so I can have a bunch of pixel filters. Um, I can do some aggressive cloud masking so I won't see um, any masks. I can filter based off of NDVI, so I only show stuff with a particularly high vegetation level. Or um, I can filter off the, the day of the year. Um, not quite sure why that only goes up to 100, but there you go. Uh, and I'll click Apply. And it'll recalculate. And here, I'll, I'll remove the, uh, the planet data, and we'll just go back to the sepal base layer. Let's see what we get now in terms of Sentinel data. OK, slowly coming in. You can see that if I had tried to do a much larger area, it probably would have taken quite some time to process, which might be fine if you're getting this information for free. but um, you know, it may be preferable to get a little bit higher resolution. All right, so now we have an area outlined as our area of interest. We're loading up tiles. I think it's loading up the red, blue, and green layers. Uh, now we've decided that, yes, this is in fact the area that we want to mess around with, and we want to export it. I can click this button, and I can retrieve uh, a bunch of different bands. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go for red, blue, and green, uh, get down to 10 meter scale, and hit retrieve. And then you should see right here that this area, a task window, is running. And it is running a sequel window. You can see the past uh, things that I've done. It'll go for a little bit of time, and here's where it actually pulls in the highest resolution version of this data and gets it uh, into some sort of format that I can use. And I'm just going to go over to my files window and show you what the past downloads have been. So all this information comes in TIFF format, uh, which I can then download and mess around with. So uh, that is SEPL in a nutshell. Ah, uh, so our new optical mosaic just came in. It's saying that there are zero items, which seems wrong. Uh, maybe it'll take a minute to load them. 
maybe it created the folder and now I'm just gonna have to wait for the, the information to actually come. Clearly the task is not yet finished. Anyway, um, so that is SEPL. Um, you'll notice that I didn't really have to uh, enter in any code. I was able to draw polygons and click a few buttons to get access to um, fairly high resolution satellite imagery. So now the question is whether this info is useful to landscapes or people who want to learn more about their land. Maybe they want to do a time lapse and see content over time. That'll be the subject for another video. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching.